of three games on day number two in Jacksonville, Florida. It's the A-Sun Baseball Championship. A beautiful evening on the campus of the University of North Florida and Harmon Stadium where it is 400 feet to dead center field. We're moments away from first pitch between the number four seed North Florida and the number two seed Jacksonville. Two teams that know each other very well. Yeah, they certainly do. Should be a lot of fun. They're separated by some eight, eight and a half miles depending on how you decide to travel between the two campuses. They see each other a lot. This will be the fifth meeting all year long. A quick look at the bracket up to this point. And earlier today, we saw Stetson advance. They will play tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Lipscomb also advancing in game one today, a 3 p.m. start, and then we'll set up the rest of the bracket depending on what happens in this game. It should be a good one. Stetson awaits the winner of this one. The North Florida, out, the North Florida Ospreys are on their way to the plate. We are just about ready to start things up here. There's a look as the Ospreys will send Chris Berry to the plate, though they are the number four seed. And here's a look at the batting order. Tanner Murphy, all A Sun first team selection, though he has struggled at the plate in this championship series. Spencer Stockton on the mound. We'll get to his numbers in just a moment, but here's the first pitch of the final game of the day, and it's a fastball foul tipped 88 miles per hour from Stockton on the way to Berry, and we are underway at Harmon Stadium. Yeah, this should be a good one. Been looking for forward to this one all day long, even though we've had two games prior. Barry hacks at an 0-1 delivery and sends it out of play back behind. No balls and two strikes. A look at Barry's year. Average at a solid 276. He has driven in 25. Got a couple of home runs to go along with that pair of doubles. Barry digs in. Stockton looks over his mitt. The wheel and deal above the letters. You would think North Florida would have to be a little bit better offensively early on than they were last night. They only scored one run through the first five innings or so, six innings last night. They got a big spot of five in the seventh. That kind of separated them from Kennesaw State. Here's the one-two, skied in the air out to left field. Some carry to it, going back on it, Corey Garistazu. And Garistazu makes the catch, shy of the warning track, out number one recorded. Now we'll take a look at Spencer Stockton. There he is. Big, burly right-hander on the mound. This is a young man that has a good resume. He's been featured on a lot of all-conference teams, all-freshman teams over the course of his career. There you go. You look at his numbers, 7-5, 3-6-1. He's a battler. Kind of fits the same mold that you saw at a Chris Gow yesterday. Kind of the way that uh, Coach Hayes likes to see his guys on the mound perform. Dalton Board stands in. He hacks at a first pitch, another fly ball to the left side, this time shallow, and the shortstop. De Brule is called off by Garistazu, who ends up making the play, and four pitches, two outs for Spencer Stockton on the mound. Here's a look at the defense that will be back behind him. Lahane and De Brule up the middle, and Ruben Samayan to track him down in center field. Yeah, the middle of that defense is a strong point, as it is with most teams. Lahane's been the glue guy all year long. The seniors kind of come into his own here in his final campaign their leader both in the clubhouse and really, to be honestly, on the field. Tanner Murphy, the center fielder, will stand in the box. Murphy's average at 330 in his sophomore campaign. He's got 10 home runs and 36 RBI. He impacted yesterday's 7-1 win defensively, made a couple of stellar plays in the outfield. He was good on the base path, but he did not collect a hit. You would think tonight he needs to be better at the plate. Good approach, have good at bats if North Florida wants to try to move on to face Stetson tomorrow. The 0 1 wheel and deal from Stockton. Breaking ball at 80 and outside. Stockton, six foot three, and he comes from good pedigree. His father, Dick Stockton, at one point was the number eight tennis player in the entire world back in the late 70s. At the knees at 87 on a journey to the back of the mitt. One ball and two strikes on Tanner Murphy. He boils there in the background. Left-hander had a good day and a good night last night. Tanner Murphy trying to get on a board, get a board in front of his senior. Here's the one-two in the dirt. Stockton going with the full green sleeves underneath the jersey.
Murphy in the box with a slight bit of movement in his stance. 2-2. Two -two. Three hopper to the shortstop De Bruyne, sidearm sling. And that's the inning. A good start for Spencer Stockton. One, two, three. Go the Ospreys, the four seed. Now it's time for the Dolphins to head to the bat rack. Scoreless midway through the first on ESPN. Some beers have a lot of ingredients. A lot of different ingredients. Our beer is brewed with four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. teams from Jacksonville, Florida, battling on day two of the A-Sun Championship. The two seed JU coming to the plate. We'll take a look at the lineup for the Dolphins, a team that has put up more runs than any other team in the A-Sun, and they do it primarily from a strong top five in the order. Yeah, Angel Camacho has been really good all year. He leads the Atlantic Sun in RBIs, proved to be up to that task yesterday in a big win. And it's really been the top four in the order, as you mentioned, that has really driven the ship here as of late. Ruben Samayan will lead off, and he will face left-hander Austin Drury. We'll take a look, get a deeper dive into Drury's numbers on the year. In just a moment, but Samayan, the lefty and lefty matchup. The sophomores average at 305. And a fastball missed the target. 1-0 to start off Samayan Drury hitting 89 with his first fastball. There's a look at his numbers, and he is accustomed to this stage, did very well in this tournament two years ago. In fact, he made the all-tournament team after going eight scoreless and one nothing win over Lipscomb that took extra frames. Yeah, he was really good in that ball game. That's the good news. Bad news, he has not had a really good outing against Jacksonville in his career. He's off to a slow start, falling behind Samayan, three balls and no strikes. Talked about Camacho, one of the reasons why he is leading the conference in RBI is because of the top three guys in the order, Samayan, Lahane, and DeBrule. And Samayan doesn't see anything close. In his 54th start of the year, he earns his 29th walk and good speed at first base for the Dolphins offense. Yeah, this is the second time this year the jury will have faced off against Jacksonville back on March 30th. Three and a third, five hits, four runs. He struck out four walk three, but he was hit hard. Three doubles in that ball game. He also hit a batter in a loss. Last year played, pitched in one game, four and a third, three hits, gave up three runs, walked four in a loss. And then two games his freshman year against Jacksonville. One they won 10 to six. The other they lost eight to nothing. And in neither one of those games did he pitch all that well. He came in as a starter in all of those contests. Chris Lahane in the box. He has been red hot in conference play. Came into the A-Sun Championships with an over 400 average. Playing against the other teams in the A-Sun, you see the overall numbers, the on-base percentage, a gaudy 433. He's also driven in 35 runs. A lot of room on the right side of the infield as the Ospreys are set up to turn two in the middle. If there's any good news about Drury right now, it's he has pitched better as of late. He did struggle in their last outing against NJIT, but before that had not surrendered more than three runs in any of those contests since that Jacksonville game. Squares the bunt, pops it right back on one hop, picked up by Drury, and he'll throw over to first base, retiring Lahane. He'll likely award him a sacrifice bunt, so Lahane who does that quite often, moves Samayan over to second base, and here is Scott DeBrule. If there's anybody hotter than 
Chris Lahane, it's Scott DeBrule, and these are the nine tasks to try and stop this JU vaunted offense. Tanner Murphy in center makes really good plays, but that entire outfield can run. They don't have the best of arms, uh, but they can track down a lot of baseballs in that outfield, and you're going to have to the way this uh, ball – uh, contracted well into the air and make big plays against the fence, and that's what's happened so far for North Florida all year. The Brule takes a strike on the outside corner. So Mayan is in scoring position, a little less than 180 feet away from home. Drury gets a ground ball to shortstop. They'll have to hurry to get to Brule, and that's what Sakara does. He's very good with the glove, light with the bat. Made that play look very easy. Samayan, though, Intently moving from second to third. Remember last night, North Florida was able to get out of an early jam that Kennesaw State provided. That kind of catapulted Frank German to the next level in the ball game. Drew would love to have a scoreless first because of his struggles against Jacksonville in his career. Here is Camacho, and this is a situation he has been very good in over the course of his career, and that has continued into his conference best 54 RBI season. Looks at a change of pace on the outside for a strike 0-1. And, and when Drury's good, it's, it's the stuff away that's tough. He does throw, like you said, 89-90, might touch 91 on the radar gun. Camacho looks at a ball in the dirt. Samayan dancing off the bag at third, but retreats. But he's good away, soft away. It's almost... Uh, Tom Glavinesque approach, never giving in to the hitter. The only time that he's going to challenge in is when he's trying to surprise you with a fastball. And he's facing Camacho here, who turned on a fastball yesterday for a two-run homer. With two outs hitting 310 with runners in scoring position 366 for Angel Camacho. Fastball high and outside, two balls and a strike. Angel had two hits yesterday, so off to a good start. The number two seed, Jacksonville Dolphins. Here's Samayan at third base. JU threatening early on. Drury brings it home. Shot through the right side. Camacho has done it again. RBI total. Click it up to 55. JU strikes first. Good piece of hitting. Ball over the outer half. He knew he was going to go there. We talked about that's what Drury wants to do. If he's going to do that and he leaves it up over the outer half, you have to drive the ball the opposite way. And Camacho, who is just a really disciplined hitter, did exactly that. You have to be thrilled if you're Jacksonville with the start. You're able to kind of manufacture a run here in this inning after the leadoff wall. They have the power potential. They have good extra base hitters in the order, including the man coming to the plate, Sam Armstrong. But the top of the order allows JU to really develop runs in multiple ways. Breaker starts off Armstrong low and outside. Sam, the senior, numbers on him. His average a little lower than normal, but a 273 clip. Six home runs, 27 RBI. And he has been good in the postseason the last few years. Lefty on lefty matchup here. And the fastball is down and away. Radar gun reads 92. Maybe filling his oats just a bit. You would like to see him maybe take more off and locate. Again, Drury has struggled against Jacksonville. He's pitched much better as of late. Walks are down, but he needs to be in full control tonight. Should be out number three. Drifting back on it, making the catch. Mac Wilson, the left fielder, but the damage is done. The walk comes home to roost. The two-out RBI single from Angel Camacho. A 1-0 lead for J.U. Armstrong was the last man to be retired, but this J.U. offense can do so much damage. We've already seen Camacho come through with RBI number 55, and here's a look at 2-3. Well, actually, it goes 3-2-4 and four in the order between DeBrule, Lahane, and Camacho. Yeah, good grouping there, and that's where the success belongs. I think Samaya needs to be included in this group because he sets the stage. As he goes, so go these offenses. And when you look at it, it's the RBI total, and it's all Samaya. He's able to get on. He's able to put pressure. Obviously, Camacho was able to drive him in just a moment ago. Sets it all up. But that's Jacksonville's success model right there. Those three guys, DeBru, Lahane, and Camacho, and they all played a part in their success in that first inning. And they did so yesterday in the offense for a JU win. 
number two seed. We've already seen the number one seed Stetson move along. And those are the top two clubs in this tournament. And of course, JU, not that far away. What would you say, about eight miles or so? If that, yeah. And so you've got a, a lot of JU Green here in attendance, along with the Osprey fans and a good crowd when you factor in that both these two schools are no longer holding their regular semester classes. Yep, a lot of folks here locally, some students in attendance, a lot of former players for both squads still in the area. And you can see some of those littered throughout the crowd here this evening. Uh, and a big rivalry game. We talked about they played four times this year. Jay won the A-Sun Series 2-1. to one. But North Florida won the early season meeting. And so it's kind of a rubber match between the two if you want to take it that far. Clubs that are very familiar with one another for so many different reasons, proximity, but like you said, both recruit very heavily in this area. So you've got a lot of local products, Floridian products that have played on regional teams, little league teams. And many of these players might have been recruited to both schools at one point as Stockton jumps ahead 0-2 on Blake Voiles, the first baseman who had himself a nice three-hit day last night. 338 average, three homers. He's driven in 33. The 0-2 on the way. Missed outside, a floated changeup. And the thing you get also when you have schools this close, this is how you gauge yourself, especially when you're talking about ones that have been successful. North Florida has won a regular season championship in the last five years. Jacksonville won one last year. They would both like to be in a regional. North Florida for the first time. Jacksonville for the first time since 2011. So you gauge yourself against the other. This is your barometer. And you're playing your barometer in the A-Sun tournament. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. And JU came in with a top 20 RPI. Certainly a shot of getting to an NCAA regional even without an A-Sun tournament championship. Fastball is upstairs to Voiles. He's leveled the count. I like Voiles. Just a solid young man. Hasn't played much his first three years, but gets an opportunity under Tim Parenton, and he's flourished. Redshirt senior from Bainbridge, Georgia, southern part of the state. He's a sport management major. 2-2. Laid off another changeup from Stockton. He's run the count full. Stockton had him 0-2. He didn't chase outside, didn't chase low, and see if Spencer tries to challenge the lefty Voiles. He does not with a fastball high and away. That's a good at bat by Voiles. He was behind in the count the whole way. But fights off a couple of pitches. Has good plate discipline. Is able to work the count in his favor and then eventually walk. It's a big walk too. Another leadoff walk that happened in the bottom of the first. We'll see how North Florida tries to take advantage of it. So the first base runner for the Ospreys and now Mac Wilson will stroll to the plate. Another lefty for Stockton to face. Wilson's average at 273, making his 40th start, Tim Parenton. And he's swinging at a first pitch, laced into left center field, but Samayan's got a beat on that. What a quick jump by Ruben Samayan. And that ball that might have challenged other center fielders made to look routine. We talk about Samayan, DeBrule, and Lahane offensively, but they're so good defensively. Samayan has the physical tools to run down almost everything in center field. Doesn't have a great arm. You can run on it, but almost everything else he can get to. De Brule is a very solid short. Lane's just made himself into a good baseball player. And so we talk about them offensively, but defensively they're just as good and just as big a part of what J.U. tries to accomplish. Jay Prather to the box, the junior with a 281 clip at the plate. Three home runs, second on the team with 34 RBI after knocking one in last night. And fastball high and outside, missed the zone. Prather's on base percentage in the 330s. Rest the bat on the shoulder as Stockton leans in to get the sign. A runner at first. Found the outside edge with a change of pace. Ballpark pristine here despite a two hour delay in the first game of the day. Started at 11 a.m., didn't finish up until well after four. Two hour and six minute delay, but the second game of our triple header, Stetson with a 2 1 victory advancing to tomorrow's 11 a.m. game as the number one seed with a 2 0 record. 
It was a quick one. 1-1, one, one, out of play. Stockton is not unfamiliar to being a starter, but uh, this is his first year back in the rotation. He was a reliever all of last year. In fact, he was the team's closer. Had six saves a year ago. He was 5-2, and two, only threw 38 and two-thirds last season. He's almost more than doubled that total here this year in terms of innings pitched. And has moved back into that starter's role. Voyles back standing. He's only attempted one stolen base, and it did not go successfully for him. Stockton third on the team in terms of innings pitched at 77 and a third. Fastball is up and out of play from Prather to stay alive in a 1-2 count. We expect to see in the next game for JU whether that's a winner's bracket game or moving into the loser's bracket. Tyler Santana, who has 10 wins on the year. But it's Stockton's turn to go today. Popped up on the left side. Drifting into or close to foul territory, but staying in fair ground. The third baseman Sam Armstrong puts him away. Yeah, for North Florida, they are usually very quick to swing early in accounts. It's been their MO all year. Uh, they want to hit good pitches, and usually the best pitches you're going to see are in the first couple in the sequence, especially if you fall behind. So that's where they've had their success. The problem is if you're not squaring it up, it can lead to some real quick innings. It can get the other team in a very good rhythm. And Florida's going to try to break that up. And that's what happened last night, honestly, with Kennesaw State. They got into a good rhythm, did the owls in the field. There's another first pitch hack, this time off the bat of the catcher, Gonzalez. Armstrong is underneath it in foul ground. He retires two in the frame. The leadoff walk does no harm. Stockton. Rolling along, he's retired six of the seven he's faced. Midway through the second, one nothing, J.U. The A-Sun Championship began with six teams. Two of those flags are heading home today, KSU and NJIT. Four remain, including the two-seed Jacksonville, who has a one-nothing lead over the four-seed North Florida. There's a look at many of the birds. Maybe a couple of those might be Ospreys hanging out. Communications tower down the right field line. Connor Stevens, Franco Guardacioni, and Corey Garistazu due up for J.U. Drury with a fastball at 90, splits the plate in half of the knees, strike one. We talked about it in the last inning, but Drury has the stuff to give you great outings. He hasn't, what I, hasn't had what I would call a great outing all year long. Maybe his best was against Lipscomb, where he went six and a third and allowed just one earned run. He did shut out Fairfield early on in the year, but that's a weekend series against a team that you should handle, correct? Seven innings where he gave up five hits, one, earned, one run, but it was unearned. Breaking ball pushed out of play with the bat of the junior Stevens, but just hasn't had that great outing, but maybe you catch fire here, you, you settle in, and you try to put the stop to a JU offense that has honestly been unstoppable for the last month, month and a half. 
Fastball elevated and right by Stevens. First strikeout of the evening for Austin Drury. You will take that Austin Drury over what you saw in the first. Mixed pitches, painted the corners, and then challenged up with the fastball. And if he's going to throw the fastball at that velocity, he can live right there, especially when you're ahead in the count and you have to protect. Guys aren't usually going to be setting belt-high fastballs, maybe a little elevated with some movement when they're behind. Bartizioni settles in and takes a strike on the outside corner, the senior catcher. A couple of home runs this year, 23 RBI. Drury Heater missed outside at 92, evens the count. There are five lefties in the order for JU, so that might be a place that Drury can go to get outs. He's got a good slider that works well against same siders, so you've got Samayan, De Bruyne, Armstrong Stevens, and the man on deck, Garastazu. And that might have ultimately been the decision for Tim Parrington. He goes, I know they haven't had a lot of success against him, but Depperman's a right-hander. Drury's a left-hander. I'm going to go the left-hander to try to get those left-handed bats out because those are key left-handed bats. Now, Camacho hits from the right side, but other than that, Armstrong has thumps. Samayan, as you mentioned, hits from the left side. You just saw Connor Stevens. Hitters count for Guardicione as he watches ball four sail by. For Drury... Issues a walk, his second of the game. The first one came around to score. Samayan back in the first. And here's Gary Stazu. The left fielder with a 333 average, but only 23 starts. 32 hits and 96 at bats for Gary Stazu. And he'll face this man, Austin Drury. I didn't realize Gary Stazu was as big as he was until just now. I don't know where I was yesterday. 6-5. He towers there at the plate. Long lean. Pretty good hitter. 210 pounds. The batting average has gone up. He's become a regular in the lineup a little bit later on in the season. An upright stance, too, makes him seem even taller. And a high bouncer on a bunt down the right field side. And it's going to stay fair. A bunt single. No, it hit off his foot. Foul ball. I'm going to say that Garistazu touched that ball while in the box, which means just a foul ball. If it had touched him while he was outside of the box, then he would be out. So a ball and a strike in the native of Hialeah down in South Florida. And now getting the explanation from home plate umpire Stephen Hagen. Garistazu and Chris Hayes will come on to be a conduit of that conversation. And Hayes will plead his case here, talking to Hagen. While Hagen is in conversation with the JU head coach, we'll go ahead and tell you about the rest of the umpiring crew. Nathan Huber is over at first base, Dugley at second, and Mayhew Edwards make the calls over at third. Garistazu gets some instruction and a 1-1 count. Chris Hayes finished with his conversation, goes back to the coaching box. 1-1 one, one coming. Line drive caught by the first baseman. Tag applied. Voiles. Quick cat-like. They grabbed that one out of the air and then turned around. Was able to find Guardicione trying to get back to the first base bag. It's a double play, and Drury faces the minimum in the second. Two in the books. J.U. with a 1-0 lead, and he gets some help from the defense over at first base with a twin killing. North Florida celebrating a double play to get out of the second inning. Jacksonville one run on one hit to this point. Moving to the top half of the third. Number four seed UNF come to the plate, but at their home ballpark where they have been very good. Taking a look at Tyler, St excuse me, Spencer Stockton, who is finishing up his warm-up tosses. And 
UNF playing in front of a home crowd. 20 wins this year at Harmon Stadium. 21 if you count yesterday's. Though technically they were the road team against Kennesaw State and it would be considered a neutral game. However, if you count wins in this ballpark, 21 of 33 games, that's solid work at home. Teams are built to win in their home ballparks and North Florida's built to win here and they know how to win here. You know, and I think well, you have some familiarity if you're Jacksonville. You've played here enough as a, as a program. Still not your home ballpark, but they have a one nothing lead. I think they have the team built to, to win here because of the offense and the power that they possess in certain spots. We'll see if North Florida can kind of mount a comeback here. A good start for Chris Mathias. Finds a hole through the left side. Senior picks up a single. He'll add to his 288 average. And the Ospreys have the leadoff man aboard. Good piece of hitting, just waited back, flipped the hands through. Didn't do a lot to drive the baseball. He just did it enough to put it in play. And you have to thrive on contact. So far, North Florida's at least made contact. That's the first one that gets scored as a hit. Man at first with nobody out. And Abraham Sequeira squaring to bunt. Puts it down. Picked up by Stockton, sidearm, side saddle flip over to Camacho at first, and Sakara does his job, a man hitting well under 200. That's why he's in the lineup to put those down. Yep, that was a good move and almost expected. I think J.U. expected it. I think everybody in the ballpark thought that that was going to be coming, and now you've got the top of the order. A couple of cracks at trying to drive in the tying run here in the third inning. Chris Berry, who flew out to left field, will be the batter against Stockton. The thing that amazes me is Barry has a little bit of pop in his bat. He has a couple of home runs. His ballpark, the ball does carry. But Jacksonville plays a very deep outfield, especially in right and in center. A little shallower in left. But anything pulled through the right side of the infield, and Matt Mathias can walk home. Samayan shading towards left center field. And it's Duncan Hunter making his championship debut out in right, and he's in the shadow of the wall. Kick and fire, breaking ball, stroke through the right side. And here is Hunter. He'll have to come up throwing, but it'll be cut off. An RBI single for Chris Berry. Single, lay down the bunt, and it goes to script. Berry picks up his 26th ribby of the campaign, tied at one. Like I said, that outfield was played very, very deep in my mind. And Barry, much like Matthias, just did enough to serve one into the outfield. And that ball that was on the ground the entire way took its time getting out to Duncan Hunter and right, and he had no chance to throw out Matthias, who never hesitated around third. North Florida is answered and still at the plate with Barry at first, Dalton Board. Stepping to the dish, but he'll watch a throw over to first. Barry back in time. I like Barry. He handles the bat well. His average doesn't really reflect it at 276. It, he's a great hitter, but doesn't strike out a ton. Puts bat on ball, and that's all you can expect. Check swing. One hopper to third. Armstrong to second base. Lahane's throw to first. He beat it out. Stayed out of the twin killing, a runner at first base, but now two gone for UNF. The slow developing play. Yeah, I didn't mean to for Dalton Board. He was trying to check his swing, but the ball rode up and in and hit off the bat. And so a break for Stockton and a bad break for Board in North Florida, but I guess the good news is it wasn't two. And you get a runner aboard for a guy in Murphy who does have pop to drive the ball out of the ballpark. And he's about due. Came in hitting over 340. He's seen over 10 points shaved off his average. Oh, for the tournament, the stretch. Stockton waits, then deals. High level. And Murphy took a little umbrage to that. Mumbles to himself a bit before he adjusts the gloves. Dalton Board has great speed. He hasn't stolen a ton of bases, just six of them on the year. But he'll be running at the crack of the bat. Short lead at first. Out of the slide step, Murphy, there's his single. 
First hit of his postseason career in 2018. Maybe that'll get him going for the Ospreys. Runners at first and second. That's three hits in the frame against Spencer Stockton. Starting to time him up a little bit better. Take a look at that good compact swing by Murphy. And you can tell guys that have played together and they're coached by the same guy because they all look a little similar for the most part at the plate. And I would say the last three swings we've seen, Matthias, Barry, and Murphy, the full swings we've seen, all look very similar in the way that they approached the game. Voyles walked the first time around, looks at a knee-high strike. You know, Murphy he's still got some growing to do. He's just a sophomore, but a tall guy, long arms. How difficult is it when you're big like that to make sure that you've got a compact swing, that you're getting your hands to the baseball quickly and not get loopy? Now you want to stay compact as much as you can because that's where your power comes from. If you start getting loopy, there's a whole bunch of holes in your swing all of a sudden, and you can't make contact at all. And so it's obviously extremely important. And he does a good job of it, at least on that at bat. I think he's kind of shortened up a little bit too. He'd been struggling. Shorten up, trying to make solid contact, and he did. Stockton for the changeup that sailed outside. Slight hitters count for Voiles. Saw his line just a moment ago. A robust 338 now at the plate. Hitting 264 with two outs. It's a solid number. 358 when there's been runners aboard. Inside corner from Stockton, and he painted it. Runner at second base is Dalton Board. Doesn't steal a lot of bases, but he does run well. Murphy can fly at first. And he'll be moving on contact if Voiles can find a gap. It's worth noting that Spencer Stockton was the starting pitcher during the 8-2 loss to North Florida during the regular season. Pass to diving Sam Armstrong off the bat of Voiles. The throw from the left fielder will not be in time. Garistazu couldn't get it to home plate. And the UNF Ospreys have taken the lead. A two-out RBI hit from Voiles. Have yourself a tournament kid. Yeah, Voiles is just playing extremely well. What we've seen out of North Florida so far, short, compact swings, just went with the pitch and drove it the other way. And the speed of Board was able to carry him home, even though the throw might have been on target. Even if it was a perfect throw, there was no chance to get bored. And North Florida doing exactly what they did last night, only a little bit earlier. They're singling Jacksonville to death here in the inning. Didn't pick up an extra base hit until the late frames last night. They like to play under the lights here at Harmon Stadium. Two on, two down. And another lefty in the box. It's Mac Wilson. He flew out to center in the second. A look at Wilson's line on base percentage. Very good, 373. About 100 points better than his batting average. And we're talking about Stockton in that game back on March 29th. Six and a third gave up 10 hits, six runs. Well, Florida did get to him and picked up their only win in the A Sun season against Jacksonville. And neither one of these pitchers have had a ton of success against the other. Stockton sets high and fires. That was a healthy cut from Mac Wilson. Foul tipped out of play. That's the biggest cut we've seen from anybody in the inning. It's a good pitch to go on. 1-0, guessing fastball, got it in a hittable zone. Wilson from right here in Jacksonville in his senior season. Stockton deals. Had him out in front of the changeup. It's been a good pitch for Stockton when he can locate it. Haven't seen much of the breaking ball. Getting to that gorgeous twilight portion of the Florida evenings. This is also one of the more difficult times to read the ball off the bat. Popped up on the infield. De Brule calls off everybody. Drifts onto the outfield grass. Makes the play, but UNF strings together four hits, two runs score, and take the lead, two to one, heading to the bottom half of the third on ESPN+.
A slight ripple in the flags here at Harmon Stadium in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida on the campus of the University of North Florida. The four seed has taken a one run advantage. RBI hits from Tanner Murphy and Blake Boyles in the top half of this third inning. If Austin Drury a lead to work with, he will face nine, one and two due up in the JU order. Bryce Zimmerman along with Robert Harper. So glad you could join us for the third of our three games here on this Thursday evening and game six of the ASUN championships. Well, now if you're Drury, you were able to work your way out of the last inning thanks to a hard hit line drive. You get a couple of runs in your favor. Now you lead in the ball game. The one thing you have to like about Drury is he works quickly. And that is good for everybody involved. Fastball upstairs from Drury. And it's a 3-1 hitter's count for Duncan Hunter. Hunter, a freshman, 271 average. Swing and a miss makes it 3-2. and two. Drury goes into the wind and fire. Foul down the right field line. And out of play. You have to like the challenge there. You don't want to allow another leadoff walk. You've walked a batter in each of the first couple innings. The leadoff walk in the first came back to bite you. Wheel and deal high and outside. There is a leadoff walk. It's the third free pass issued by Austin Drury. One per inning. And Drury hasn't been hit hard. He has allowed base runners free of the free pass. First time through the order, he's only given up one hit, and that was the RBI single to Angel Camacho. Ruben Samayan coming to the plate. He walked and scored back in the first. This is the strength of the JU offense. Samayan, Lahane, De Brule, Camacho, even going down into Armstrong and his run production capability. Samayan chokes up on the bat by an inch and takes a crossfire strike on the outside black at the belt. Drury will walk, guys. He's walked multiple guys in all but four of his starts now. And the majority of them, he's walked three or more. Yeah, three or more seven times this year. Breaking ball away. Defensively, you can kind of catch some of that in that Camera shot from center field. But Sakara looking to turn two and shade it up the middle. Same with the second baseman, Prather. But UNF not convinced that Samayan won't bunt. Third baseman Barry is on the grass. A little bit low with a fastball. Gonzalez wanted that call. Drury wanted it as well. That was a good fastball down and looked like it was right at the knees over the outer half. It was close enough at least to get a groan. But unlike German last night, you would think that Drury has to live with base runners in the dugout and not on base. 2-1, they've got the runner hung up, but the throw going to first base is off target. Hunter rounding second on his way to third. The throw across the diamond is too high and almost went down the left field line. So an error by UNF. See where it gets charged if it's to Drury or it's over to first base and Voiles. I think that's going to be on the pitcher. I think that was wide of the bag. Drury had him so picked off that he could have taken his time. Because what had happened is the runner, Duncan Hunter, had already decided that he was going to go to second. That's an easy pickoff play. 2-1 with a tying run at third base and a fastball high and tight. 3-1 and one now on Samayan. And Drew just having all kinds of control issues, not only towards the plate, but also in a situation where he had a guaranteed free out. Just a little soft toss to the first baseman would have done the trick. Samayan in a hitter's count, and 
It really gets tough after that. Lahane and DeBrule, the two best hitters in conference action this year. And then Camacho. And you basically got an inning reset with one out with the top of the order up and just couldn't come through and make the play. Samayan stings it in the air out to left center field. Murphy on the run. He's called off at the last instant by Wilson, who makes the catch. He's in no position to make a play at home. It's a sacrifice fly from Samayan. And we're square again, 2-2 two, two in the bottom half of the third. Well, Samayan did exactly what he had to do. Get the ball up in the air. Again, Duncan Hunter runs pretty well, so he was able to score easily on that ball that was hit fairly deep into the left center field gap. Bags are clear now. J.U. celebrating good baseball, a walk, an error that allows Hunter to use his speed and move up two bases, and then the sack fly, a run without a hit. We talked about Kennesaw in the last game against Stetson, and it goes through Florida here. You just cannot have those types of errors against a team that is as quality as Jacksonville's been all year. Mental mistakes. Because what happens is teams like Jacksonville take advantage of them. When you're given opportunities, you have to pounce. No floor was given one. They ended up not being able to take advantage. And then Jacksonville, on the flip side, was able to drive in a run. Two ball and no strike count after two fastballs missed angrily up and away. Jacksonville wants to have a conference. That's Tommy Boss who heads out in his first year with UNF under first year skipper Tim Parenton. We talked to Coach Parenton the other day before the tournament began and he says I'm a little bit different than most. He says I don't have a set rotation coming in. He says, everybody's on deck. That means Depperman's in play tonight. If he feels like he needs what would essentially be his third starter and his starter tomorrow for any game this evening in order to try to win, he's going to use him. 2-1 is low. Three balls and one strike on Lahane. A hitter's count. Drury has had the strike zone start to dance around on him. Wheel and deal through there. Called a strike to run the count full. Radar gun reads 91 miles per hour on that four-seamer. In the wind and fire. Payoff delivery stung in the air out to center field. Murphy got a late break initially, but now cruises underneath and picks it out of the sky. Two outs and Scott DeBrule coming to the plate. Grounded out to the shortstop in the first. He's 0 for 1. DeBrule entered last night with 4 for 4 day working in his final game of the regular season. Then he went 2 for 2. He was actually 6 for 6 at one point before being retired late in yesterday's game one win for JU in the tournament. The 0-1. A ball. The Brule, no home runs, but he has driven in 49. I mean, you mentioned this yesterday, Robert, and it was very adept of you to notice. You look at the total number of hits for Scott De Brule, 78, eight doubles, three triples. You don't have to be very good at math to figure out that he has 67 singles this year. Yep. And again, we talked about Samayan at the top of the order, Chris Lahane another. When those guys are out in front and on base, you drive in runs with base hits. It's that simple. Drury grazes the outside corner, two and two. Lefty on lefty matchup, the two, two, smack down the left field line and fair, rolling into the bullpen and over the practice rubbers. And De Bruyne will hold up at second base with a rare Extra base hit is ninth of the year. Well, we talked about the fact that he doesn't have a lot of doubles. That's one way to get one. He was late on the pitch and just slapped it down the third baseline. And now you have a chance with the league's R leading RBI man to drive in a go-ahead run. Again, he was just late. He was trying to go the other way, but he was still late on it and 
just inside of Barry and that third baseline. That's an easy double. Two out threatening for the JU Dolphins, and here he is again, Angel Camacho, breaking ball in the dirt. Camacho with an RBI single through the right side back in the first inning. His total now up to 55. He's added to that total quite easily through a game and change. That's an old school guy too, no batting gloves. And he can hit to all fields. He's got a big hole on the right side yet again. 1-0 skipped up there and blocked well by Gonzalez. He's a good backstop. Showed off his arm yesterday multiple times. Now his mobility moving to his left. There's a look at Camacho's season. He's only a junior, Angel Camacho. I know no one's throwing right now for North Florida, but Drew continues to have the control issues he's had. How much longer can you go without throwing strikes? Got one through there to make it a 2-1 count. Looked to be a pretty good pitch to hit that Camacho elected not to take a cut at. It may also be the same theory we saw out of Lipscomb in NJIT earlier today, which is as long as you can kind of get yourself righted, which both staffs were able to do. Maybe you can start getting outs. 2-1 got the call in the lower portion of the zone at the knees. Draws level. Two in the ball column, two in the strike column. Camacho takes a look down the third base line, taps the lumber on home plate. He's ready to go. Drury trying to get out of an inning. The game tied. A breaking ball bounced over the shoulder of Gonzalez. He couldn't stop that one. A wild pitch. Actually, it hit him. Yeah, it hit him. Wondered why Gonzalez didn't go after that ball aggressively, and the reason being that Camacho was struck with the baseball. So the inning continues for Sam Armstrong. That's the eighth guy that Drury has hit this year. And it's the seventh guy he's hit in his last five starts. Lefty on lefty matchup here. Armstrong is 0 for 1. Split the plate in half, 92 mile per hour. Well, Armstrong has power. He has power to all fields. He had a home run in last year's tournament. RBI chance for the left hander. Nowhere near the zone on the 0 1. The inning started with a walk. An error has helped things along. There's been one hit, though it did not factor into the only run scored here in the bottom half of the third to this point. Hit batter has put two JU Dolphins on the base path. The 1-1 one -one coming. Breaking ball, rainbows well outside. Again, the control issues for Drury have to be concerning because if he doesn't have control, you're allowing free base runners. He's had two walks that have scored already. Now one was helped via the air, no doubt, but still he's had two walks come around to score. For UNF, it's gotta be frustrating because he's only given up two hits. It blows a fastball by Armstrong there to even the count. And when he's been around the plate, he's been okay. That's not the issue. The issue is he hasn't been around the plate nearly enough. He's already thrown 60 pitches here in the third. Still not out of the third. A look at De Bruyne at second base. Camacho over at first. Armstrong in the box. 2-2. Two -two. Got a good pitch to hit. 91 at the belt. Couldn't keep it fair. And you think about the 61 pitches that he has now thrown. He has only thrown 30 strikes. I mean, When you're one to one, ball strike ratio, that is not good enough. The 2-2 coming. Missing with the breaking ball again. 
Full count three and two. Connor Stevens would be next. Runners will get a head start. DeBrule from second, Camacho from first. The payoff from Drury. We'll do it again. Seems to be locating the fastball in this at bat against Armstrong, but the breaking ball doesn't seem to be an option, so Armstrong can just sit with the heat. And when Drury's good, it's the breaking ball and the change that get him there. But if you can spot the fastball, continue to spot the fastball, you should at least be able to get some outs and avoid walking guys. That's, again, going to be key number one here. Another 3-2 off the fist. Yeah, I think Armstrong chased ball four there. Yeah, appeared to be in on the hands or maybe even up in the zone. JU third baseman hanging tough, though. A long A-B developing between him and the starter, Austin Drury. Pushing that pitch count further and further up. Not yet through the third frame. Runners will get their head starts. Downstairs, ball four. That's quite a plate appearance from Sam Armstrong. They're loaded up for Connor Stevens. Again, you got to throw strikes and you can't pitch from behind. And for the most part of that at bat, Austin Drew was pitching from behind. Now he battled, but eventually, you foul off enough pitches like Armstrong did, you're going to get a free pass or at least something you can handle. Second walk of the inning. He's also hit a batter. Fourth walk overall for Drury. He struck out Stevens back in the third. Excuse me, in the second. Breaking ball nearly hit him. And if he's able to get out of this inning unscathed, it, he may not come out of the ball game, but it'll be pretty close, not only because he's struggling, because his pitch count is way up there. Activity about to begin in the UNF bullpen. 1-0 breaking ball is a hanger, and Stevens missed it. One ball and one strike. There's DeBrule at third base. Stevens in the box. The Dolphin at every bag. 1-1. One, one. Tied him up. Beautiful night for baseball, there's no doubt about that. It's just been a struggle for Drury. You get an out here with the bases loaded, take a deep, deep sigh of relief and go back and try to get some runs. That's a big opportunity though for Jacksonville, the two seed, to kind of break things open early. Stevens, a 429 hitter with the bases loaded. And he chased the slider out of the zone, strike three. Drury wild, but a good time to pick up his second strikeout of Connor Stevens. And he keeps it a tie ball game despite surrendering a run. When we come back, we'll talk to the North Florida Athletic Director, Lee Moon, on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome. 
Welcome back to Harmon Stadium on the campus of the University of North Florida. Three in the books and nothing determined yet. North Florida and Jacksonville tied 2-2. Now joined by North Florida Athletic Director Lee Moon. And Coach Moon, this is a, a wonderful facility and the first time that you're able to show it off at the A-Sun Championships. Tell us what this experience has been like having the conference light shine here at Harmon Stadium. Well, it's been really uh, anticipated from our staff and, and our program to be able to do this. It's been a long time coming, nine years before we've had an opportunity to host. So it's really been something special to where we've really tried to do things the right way and uh, put a lot, of extra, a lot of extra into trying to build the, the Harmon Stadium where it was really something that we could showcase. And, for us to have this game tonight, and this weather and everything, it's just, uh, it's been fun. And hopefully it, it's going to continue to be a great game. But we've been really lucky uh, to do some things with adding the new video board to doing some things within the, within the stadium that's enhanced the things. That, I mean, our field is the best it's looked ever. Yeah, tell uh, me about this field. I mean, it looks fantastic. I noticed that as soon as I got here yesterday for day number one of the ASIM Championships. What goes into getting this field as pristine as it looks and knowing that you're going to play 10, maybe even 11 games on this playing surface and how to keep it looking so fresh? Well, it's goes, it goes. all the credit goes to our crew, Brian and Josh. They, uh, they do, they've done a great job. Brian, they both know and they take great pride in working on baseball fields. That's their specialty. And they've taken pride in what they've done here, how they cut the grass, how they feed it, how they water it, and it's just been something that's uh, been really amazing to see because of how they've done it. But uh, they've, they've just done a great job with it, and it's been something for us to really watch. And it, obviously it's paid off. To, we put a little extra money into things, like I said, to laser grade the infield again and rebuilding the infield and doing things with the outfield. It's just, it's just been fun. And, Today was fun this morning when we had the rain delay. Uh, I think that's probably the highlight of, of my day is watching our all of our coaches and our staff uh, take great pride in what we do when we host uh, A-Sun Championship events. And we had my men's and women's basketball coaching staff, my men's and women's soccer staff, my, all of my marketing girls. We were all out there pushing my ticket manager. Everybody was out there pushing the tarp and pulling the tarp out. So that was it was the, all hands on deck, yeah. and it was really funny. We lost one girl underneath the, the tarp for a few minutes. The tarp monster got her. Sometimes yeah. that happens. But, uh, yeah, that was the largest uh, group I've ever seen to take in a tarp pull. Fly ball out to center field. This one is going to be caught by Samayan. It's off the bat of Ray Gonzalez. Leadoff single by Jay Prather with UNF at the plate in the top half of the fourth inning. Still tied 2-2. We're joined by athletic director for UNF, Lee Moon, kind of walking us through some of the process of what it was like to get ready to host the A-Sun Championship. And you mentioned some of the improvements to the ballpark and strikingly out in left center field. We haven't shown a lot uh, on the broadcast because it's not necessarily as impactful as it is here because it's really bright and beautiful, that gorgeous video screen in left field. We tried to go and uh, we – the extra mile and we tried we did it in our arena uh most of the boards are standard or 16 millimeter boards for baseball facilities and we actually went to a 10 millimeter board which gives you much more clarity uh, greater definition in, in your pictures and the brightness it, it really jumps and we did that with the purpose and it's put a little extra money in it and the Nevco is a company we worked with, and, and they've been great. They've got a, a tech here that's committed here all week. In case anything was to go wrong, they wanted to make a great impression for everybody at the, and have a great experience, and that's been able to do that with those replays. Yeah, what does it allow you to do? You get the replays. You have some of the, the numbers up there, the radar gun, but how does that help improve the fan experience? Well, I think just being able to talk about it and see the replays and be able to make decisions on the – on the A foul ball out of play. <laughs> yeah. You know, when they can, they can look at a replay and they can yell – they're yelling at the umpires and then they, all of a sudden they see the umpire made the right call. Um, that's all part of it. It's really – really, it's, it's really something. There's a look at that – University yeah. of North Florida video board. In fact, it looks it looks way better than that in person. It's kind yeah. of hard to show video on video. Right. But uh, certainly 
you can see the scale of how large that is and some of the numbers that are up there for fans to see. And it makes it feel more like uh, like something you might see when you go to a minor league game or when you go to even a professional game, the highest level, some of the information that you're able to get as a fan and, and immerse themselves into the experience here. Talk a little bit about this program and how well they've done here at Harmon Stadium this year. It's the first year under Tim Parenton who has a background both here at UNF but also developing players at the next level and it's been it's a four seed but still 21 wins here at Harmon Stadium yeah I, you know we've we've protected our home field and that's something that's important I thought we've where we've really failed down in the past is once we graduate we've temper ten, uh, I had a tendency to taper off and then what we were able to do here this year was we sustained ourselves and had a really good record after graduation. You know, we went on the road and swept Gulf Coast and we came home and took two out of three from Lipscomb and then we, we got ourselves in position to be a four seed, which was, I think for the first year with where we are with a, a lot of young players, I thought Coach Parrington's done a, a really, really nice job. And we'll see what happens in this, uh, in this game tonight because it could springboard into a lot of, a lot of positive for the program. Another upgrade you've made here on campus, which is evident in the athletic program, and certainly one of the reasons why we're on the air here today is getting the ESPN scenarios installed and becoming a part of the fabric of the athletic department for UNF. What was that process like, getting the equipment and outfitting some of these arenas and stadiums and locations on campus in order to bring those ESPN broadcasts to the Osprey faithful? Well, the first problem was trying to find the money to do all this. but then once That's we, always the first problem. Yeah, well, once we figured out some ways to do some creative financing, we were able to get it done. But I think it's really been a good, a really good opportunity for us, uh, and it's bringing exposure to all of our programs. We started with basketball, men's and women's basketball, and then we started volleyball this year. And we did 17 games in baseball this year. Next year, we're going to expand it to uh, to softball. And this year, we did the first ESPN Plus broadcast ever on the collegiate uh, platform, and that was our women's tennis uh, championships. So it was it was it's been fun. It's been a long year. Of course, this is kind of the last sport wrapping up for the 2017-2018 season. UNF playing as the number four seed in the A-Sun Championships, hosting this event and doing a fantastic job of it as Sakara digs in and he'll roll to second base and that'll be the inning. We thank you so much, Coach well, Moon, for coming up here and joining us and, and really putting on what has been a wonderful event. Terry, thanks for having me and uh, keep an eye on Harper, will you? Oh, definitely. You know, I, know, I know you gotta- We keep gotta him keep him in check. Oh, absolutely. Just keep him in, in check and let him make sure he toes the line. You'll be good. Thanks so much for having me. All right, a 2-2 tie midway through the fourth inning on ESPN+. Plus. An institution in the Ace Sun Championships and at any baseball league around the country. It's the Dizzy Bat Race. I don't think that one kid got very dizzy, but the little one was able to beat Ozzy, or his friend, to Ozzy. And there's a look at a beautiful evening here on the campus of the University of North Florida. A nice crowd has filed in. Darkness has now fallen over Harmon Stadium, and the bottom three do up for the JU Dolphins in the bottom half of the fourth inning in a game where we are squared up at two runs apiece. Drury comes back out and delivers a strike. Want to thank 
Athletic Director Lee Moon for joining us in that top half of the fourth inning. Great information on the ASUN Championship, what it took to get all of the facilities prepared, prepared for that, and of course, the field, which has been a topic of conversation from everybody around here, as it has been effortlessly maintained, at least to the naked eye. Yeah, you've been around Jacksonville quite a bit in my life. I, to be quite honest, used to call UNF my home. Never Two. seen this field look this good. 2-1 Clips, Guardicione is on his way to first base, second time he's been aboard. And a start with the leadoff man reaching for a second consecutive inning and three out of the four have been put on. And, and three of those times, all three of those times, it's not been with a hit. The score is not the problem. 2-2 Two is not the issue here. The issue is the control for Austin Drew. How long can you continue to live with the fact that you just can't seemingly find the plate on a consistent enough basis? That's been the pitch that's really given him fits, the breaking ball. Can't throw up for strikes, not getting the left-handers to chase as Garastezu digs in. He lined into a double play back in the second. He hit the ball right on the nose, but because Boyles was holding the runner on, Artisioni was right in position to grab it and make the play and end the inning. Falls behind again, 2-0 and oh on Garastazu. It's just been a labor for Drury. It almost looks like he's unable to find any type of rhythm. And you thought that that strikeout of Stevens with the bases loaded might be a catalyst to at least get him propelled through the fifth. It's just not been his night. And as he's behind 3-0, he's in danger of putting the first couple of guys on again. Finds the strike zone on 3-0. Still a hitter's count for Garistazu. The stretch and deliver. A bunt attempt fouled away on a 3-1 delivery and what looked to be ball four. Appeared to be up on the six foot five Garistazu. Instructions given at first base to Guardicione and there is activity in the pin, Nick Marchese. Payoff delivery, swing and a miss. Foul tipped and held on to by Gonzalez and that's a big strikeout. Third of the evening for Austin Drury. Well, that's the stuff that he has. The problem was he was 3-0 to start that sequence. You need to have that pinpoint control or that bulldog mentality as soon as the at-bat starts to take place. But a good pitch on a 3-2 offering. And Garastazu might have chased his bit as well. That was two fastballs up and in. One he tried to bunt, the other he was a foot and a half away from. Duncan Hunter has scored a run today. He reached on a walk, eventually moved up two bases to third on a throwing error in a play where he should have been picked off, and then came home on a sacrifice fly. Guardicione studying Drury with his lead. And Drury missed. One ball and one strike. Hunter, just a freshman, making his 31st start at 271 average. Got a good pitch to hit and swung right through it. You have enough life on the fastball. I mean, honestly, if you're Drury, you can live with that for a while. 90, 91, 92 from the left side, that's good enough. You can add three miles per hour to it when it's a lefty throwing. Just feels faster. The one, two from Drury. Breaking ball and laid off of by the freshman. Lefties also tend to have a little bit more movement on their fastball. A little bit more tail or turn. I like to call it black magic. When you throw from the wrong side, maybe it is. 2-2. Two -two. Off the fist and out of play. And in ball games like this, kind of like the first game today, where you feel like you're going to be able to get more runs or at least more opportunities to score runs, throwing strikes with fastballs is not a bad idea. Especially to the bottom third of the order. 2-2. As, as, as good as it might be. 
Got the call on the outside corner. That was borderline. Hunter left the bat on his shoulder, and he's rung up. Two out, a runner at first base, and here's another view. That was a good job by Gonzalez to frame it. It was close enough. That's one that you have to offer at if you got two strikes and you're Duncan Hunter. But you can live there all night long if you're Austin Drew. That's not going to hurt you against a right-hander at any point. Best, so, the worst they're going to do is beat it into the dirt and through the infield on the right side. Nobody's going to hit that out of the ballpark. Cardicione reached after being struck with a pitch. But since then, back-to-back -back K's in the book for total. And Samayan, who is looking for his first official at bat, a walk, a sack fly, he scored a run, and knocked in another. No surprise, two runs on the board, that Samayan's been a part of both of them. And with Drury's control issues, no surprise, they're both been walks that have scored. All the way to the backstop on the fly. That's an easy base to take for Guardacioni. No problem putting down wild pitch in the scorebook on that delivery. That was a fastball, and it just missed everything. When I saw Austin Drury during his freshman year against Lipscomb in the tournament, I thought you were going to have a draft pick on your hands. And it's just not the same. That was two years ago. And he was dominant, maybe even beyond dominant, because he grabbed the baseball when North Florida was one of the top three seeds in the tournament. So they had some talent. Hitters count for Samayan, and Drury will step off, stare back Guarda Sioni to the bag. J.U. got a run in the first. RBI hit from Camacho. Two runs in the top half of the third from UNF, and J.U. answered in the bottom half of the frame. Samayan drove him in. Fast strike at the knees. And you can live there too. You hit a ground ball through the infield, congratulations. That's the way I would look at it. You walk, that's my fault. Got a good fielding infield for the most part. Sakara can really flash it at short. 2-2, Two -two. Sakara will get a chance. Field sets, throws. And that's pretty. Sakara squared up the baseball on three bounces. Made a routine 6-3 play. The leadoff man does not come around this time. Four in the books. We'll talk to Chris Hayes, Dolphins head coach, when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Back at Harmon Stadium on the campus of the University of North Florida. Two runs apiece between the two seed and the four seed. And we're now joined by Chris Hayes, head coach of the JU Dolphins. And no surprise, this one's a tight one between these two, two clubs. This is exactly what we expected. Knew they'd come out uh, on fire. They're super playing super aggressive. And uh, you know, we're doing a good job of withstanding that aggressiveness right now and uh, doing a pretty good job of putting some pressure on them. Coach, uh, talk about Spencer Stockton, your starter. I know he was your closer a year ago, gets moved to the starting rotation this year. Struggled in the first go-round, but he's been able to kind of work through some things here in the first three in or four innings of the ball game. Well, Spencer's been so important for us throughout his career, and he's done every, everything he can possibly do on a pitching staff. So he's, he's super prepared for every situation that he's going to be in. He's the right guy for the, for the job today, um, and, and our guys play really, they, they play really hard for him. Thank you very much, Coach. Head back into the dugout. Good luck the rest of the way. Absolutely, gentlemen. There is a look at Spencer Stockton. I want to thank Chris Hayes for joining us here in the top half of the fifth inning. I would play for Chris Hayes. Not that I have the talent to play for him. I don't. But I love the comment. He's the man for the job today. And you know that's what he relayed to his team. And that's how he relayed it to Spencer Stockton. I don't know how you could not have confidence with just a single comment like that. 
You've been through the wars. You've done everything for us from long relief to close to start. You're the man for the job today. Go grab the baseball. Sounds like a great slogan for a candidate. You're the man for the job today, and Stockton trying to become that man. Facing the top of the order, Barry Board and Murphy. Barry's been a factor. Single, fly out to left. He's one for one. Excuse me, one for two. Now down in the count, one and two. Wheel and deal by Stockton. Outside corner, ring him up. Beautiful pitch to retire Barry. And for Spencer Stockton, it took him until the fifth inning to record his first strikeout. Boy, good job by Gardasioni behind the plate. He framed that up nicely. You know, they, they teach catchers, depending on where you're at, to either catch it in the webbing or catch it in the heel of the glove. That way you get a little bit more of the plate with at least a visual for the umpire, and he was able to do that there. On the outer half, he caught it more in the heel of the glove, and therefore... The webbing is over the heart of the plate and looks more like a strike. Dalton Board will stand in. Scored a run back in the third. On base percentage up over 400 for the year. It's hard to believe that catchers could be that fine, but good catchers are, great catchers are. Guys that receive well, those are the ones that get you extra strikes, that get you extra outs because of the way they take in the baseball. And that's always been something that's been important in the game of baseball as Board pulls it just foul down the first base line. Something that's valued, something that would be more reputation-based, but as the game is advanced and you see more video, whether it's on recruits or at this level, you can start to teach that framing, pitch framing, strikes that maybe were off the plate, but percentage of called strikes can be put into the analyt analytics and metrics. It's a great way for catchers to get a little extra value out of their position. And it's no longer just hearsay or, oh, he's really good on, based on reputation. You can actually start to quantify it. Three and one to board. Underneath it and into the night sky. You know, you look back, and, and I always equate it to pitchers who work the outside edges a lot, and most of that came down to the 90s version of the Braves with Glavin and with, with Maddox and even to Steve Avery and some others. John Smoltz more of a power pitcher. But I think they would have a lot, cr uh, credit a lot to their catchers in that situation. Avi Lopez, some others, guys that either were already great receivers of the baseball or like Javi Lopez learned to be better defensive catchers. Maddox yeah. had his own catcher his entire career to begin with. That's right. And you have you had a philosophy as Dalton Board pops up to the right side of the infield. Should be easy for Lahane. And it is. Two gone. But you had the Braves adopt a philosophy that they were going to use a roster spot, which are much more valuable at that level than they are at the NCAA level, but they were going to use a roster spot for a guy that didn't care about his bat. Yeah. It was how did he handle his staff? How did he frame pitches? What were some of the other attributes he could have? And, of course, along comes Pudge Rodriguez and skews what people think a catcher can do offensively at the plate in the 90s. It became a potential power position, not just for home runs, but doubles and average, and even in some cases some decent speed as players began to get more and more athletic. And Pudge Rodriguez, I think, was, if he wasn't the start of that wave, he certainly was at the crest. Eddie Perez was the name that was escaping my grasp there for a moment as a great receiver of the baseball. Another fly on the infield, foul territory, plenty of it. And Camacho comes racing in to make the grab. Round number three. Strike out and a pair of pop outs and a one, two, three, fifth, just what the doctor ordered. We'll talk to that man, head coach Tim Parenton, when we come back. Still tied 2 2 at the midway point.
under the night sky, Harmon Stadium. Seeing two teams from the Jacksonville area, the Dolphins two and the North Florida Ospreys two. And here is the head coach of the Ospreys, Tim Parenton. And coach, you have been a part of this rivalry in certain respects over the past couple of years. It's your first time in the playoffs to meet this team as a head coach. What do you think of the atmosphere here at Harmon Stadium? It's a good atmosphere every time we play them, crosstown rival in any sport, soccer, basketball. You know, it's always a good challenge. Coach, talk about Drury on the mound. He struggled locating, but he's been able to get out of most of the situations he's found himself in. How long do you go with him if he continues to struggle the way that he has? Well, he's at 90 pitches, so he's not going to go that much longer. We're just going to keep going with him, and he's getting outs, and that's the bottom line is getting outs. Uh, we knew it wasn't a good matchup, but, you know, it's just one of those things. It's tournament time. you got to dig deep and see what you can get out of him. All right, Coach, thank you so much, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. That's Tim Parenton, who joined UNF after a couple of years stint. Uh, Hudson Valley in New York is the head coach of the Renegades, a Tampa Bay Rays affiliate, had previously been an assistant coach for UNF, and he's going to stick with Drury here, even though the pitch count getting up. How many head coaches are going to look at you in the middle of a ball game and go, hey, we already knew it was a bad matchup. We're just going to stick with it as long as we can. I mean, it's basically what he said. We knew going in it was a bad matchup. But we're getting exactly what we wanted out of it, which is he's been able to get enough outs to only keep them to two runs. Third That's about time. as honest as it gets. Third time through the order. We'll see how Drury fares. Activity has continued in the bullpen for nearly two innings now. Nick Marchis continuing to throw and an outer half strike delivered by Austin Drury to Lahane. And, you know, coaches know a lot more than I do. But I, he's right. You look at the numbers. He hasn't been very good against JU ever. Swing and a miss. Three pitches to put down Lahane, and he has now struck out three of the last four men that he has faced. Riley. Austin Drury getting stronger as the game goes along. Well, I mean, I think what happens as you get tired is you become more focused <laughs> in on just throwing the baseball. At least you either go one way or the other, and I don't think Drury could have gone much further the other direction. And so maybe a little bit of uh, tiredness has slowed down the arm a little bit, maybe knocked down some of the jitters. He's still throwing hard. That was at 91. But maybe a little bit more laser-like focus. He's throwing more strikes. DeBrule has a double, and he'll spit on a breaking ball to even the count. Jacksonville, two runs on two hits, perfect in the field. UNF, two runs on five hits and one miscue. Close pitch doesn't go Drury's way, two and one. The left-hander rock and release. Slap left side and a base knock. De Brule with another multi-hit game. That's his 19th of the year. He's pretty good, at least in terms of making contact. He's not going to knock the ball out of the ballpark. That's evident. But what a great three-hole hitter. Not going to get himself in a situation where he can't put a little composite bat on the baseball. Only 19 strikeouts this year and 220 at-bats coming in. I mean, one out of every 11 at-bats or something. <laughs> a pretty good number. And he is adept at going the other way. Both of his hits this evening to the left side. Camacho been aboard twice. Lays off downstairs. Angels RBI hit came back in the first inning. His 55th of the season. JU offense that pretty much outscored the rest of the A-Sun over the course of the year by 50 runs. They have offense. Offense for days. Camacho ahead in the count now. Two balls and no strikes. Been limited so far by Drury to just two. Which is saying something because they only have two hits. I mean, they just have two hits. Drury's been good when he's been around the plate. He just hasn't been around there very much. Hitters count stung. Deep left center field. Murphy on his horse. He's going to get there. Excellent jump by Tanner Murphy. That'll catch a scout's attention. Boy, that, that ball was smoked and going away. Had a little hook out action for it away from Murphy in center field, and he made that look easy. It's pretty good. Closing speed of those long strides. Murphy six foot three, six foot four. Drury getting some help from the defense. Two gone, still a runner on, and Armstrong up. 
Drury now getting better despite his pitch number reaching the century mark. Seems to have settled into the game, locating much better. Upstairs with the gas, still clocking at 90 miles per hour. He's got good velocity. Still a little bit of movement on that fastball. You honestly think maybe what? Get to 120 max? That might be one more inning if he's able to get out of this one. Checking throw to first. And that was awkward from Drury there, too, if you didn't notice. He, he already handled one earlier. Yeah, he already has one throwing error trying to pick off move, a play where they should have gotten an out that eventually turned into a run. 1-0 Armstrong late on the gas, 1-1. One one. He took a little bit more off of that one at 88. Robert, you were talking a little bit earlier about how you watched Drury a few years ago and thought this kid's going to be playing professional baseball. Someone still might take a flyer and a lefty arm that can still pump low 90s, 100, 105 pitches. There's somebody out there that's looking at him saying, he's got the stuff, I can fix him. Right now, he's pitching pretty well despite not having his A stuff, maybe not even his B stuff. I don't think he's broken by any stretch of the imagination. I just think that there needs to be a change in focus for him at some point. I mean, if you get that corrected, mechanically he's fairly sound. Get him into a program where maybe he focuses a little bit better. I don't know what the situation may be, but... He all of a sudden reverts back to a guy who has better control. But if he's going to throw 91-92 at the next level, he's going to have to have really good control. 2-1 off the edge of the bat and foul. Wild at 97-98, you can deal with for a while. Wild at 91-92, you cannot. And he's never going to be at 97, but even maybe with another program or as he grows and continues to get stronger. 94-95 might be a possibility from the left side. Two balls, two strikes on Armstrong. Here's the pitch. And I don't think we've made enough of this from Drury. He has struggled tonight. There is no doubt you just have to look at his numbers, but I mean, he's still battled. And, and there's a credit to him there. I mean, of all the outings he's had against JU, this honestly might be his best to this point. And that's saying something. He has seen Jacksonville a lot over his career, and the numbers are not good if you're just joining us. Robert went over them early on, but kind of the stuff that you think of as a horror story when you're a pitcher. I mean, the fewest runs he's given up in his career to Jacksonville, three. That was... Last May 18th and four and a third. 2-2. Two -two. A breaker in the dirt stopped by Gonzalez and Armstrong, who can often be termed as a free swinger, has really been patient in this tournament and certainly today. Got ahead in the count in the first before flying out and went through nine, ten pitches, earning a walk in the third. Now he's run it full again. Payoff delivery, runner takes off. It's outside, ball four. Second time he has walked Armstrong. That was a good at bat by Armstrong. Kind of fought through a whole bunch. Was able to work the wall. Connor Stevens, the DH, has struck out twice against the lefty, and Chris Hayes is going to make a change. Not going to stick with Connor Stevens, who really has not looked comfortable at the plate against the left-hander Drury. Instead, he's going to go ahead and make the call and bring in Evan Fernandez, six foot one, redshirt junior from right here in Jacksonville, Florida. If I'm not mistaken, he had a home run in last year's tournament, did he not? He absolutely did. Fernandez has not been used nearly as much regularity in Looks like Tim Periton may make a counter move here with Nick Marchese ready to go in the bullpen down the left field line. Periton heading out. We still haven't seen the move. There it is. He points out to the bullpen. So these two coaches 
playing a little chess match. We'll see who is the winner for the fifth inning when we come back. First and second occupied, two down, and a new pitcher coming on for the Ospreys. Bottom half of the fifth inning, Austin Drury is out of the game, but not before he really gutted out possibly his best performance against JU in his career. Yeah, four and two thirds innings, he only surrendered two runs. And those two runs, the lowest that he's surrendered. Now he does own the two runners aboard, uh, but he walked a bunch of guys, did not have a control, hit a couple of guys. It just needed to be better tonight, at least in terms of control in order to go deeper to the ball game. But you heard Tim Parenton say it off the top. They didn't think it was a great matchup to begin with. And so he'll be replaced by that man, Nick Marchese. A look at Nick Marchese's season. This will be his 19th appearance. 10 walks, 31 strikeouts, and an ERA at 4.02. That cat and mouse game continues. We're not going to see Fernandez now. So We're going Fern to see another pinch hitter. Fernandez was announced into the game, so he is no longer available for the rest of the game. And J.U. will bring in Chris Gow, who pitched yesterday's game. A win for Jacksonville. He gutted that one out. And Gow is going to be called on here, a left-handed hitter, right here in Jacksonville, his home. So Gow's 5 for 30 on the year with a couple of RBIs. This would be interesting. Takes up a lot of the box, six foot four, and a strike delivered from Marchese. So a 2 2 ball game in the bottom of the fifth inning. Both these teams won yesterday. This is not an elimination game, but treating it almost as if it was. Check swing, and he went around. Gal behind in the count, 0-2. Marchese comes in, gets this out. You can close the book on Drury. He will be someone who does not factor in the decision. And then if you're Tim Parrington, you got basically five innings out of a guy that hasn't fared well against Jacksonville. 0-2, fastball sliced out of play. Marchese pumping 90-mile-per-hour heat on the way to the plate. And Marchese, two, of four with, two for four with three saves and a 4.02 earned run average. He struck out 31 and 40 and a third. He's only walked 10, so he's had pretty good control. Another 0-2 offering with two on. Off the plate, hometown crowd wanted it. It hit the mid, but Gonzalez was set up outside. That was at 90. Gal is ready in the box. Here it comes. Looped, shallow left field, gonna be trouble. It's over the head of the third baseman, Barry. Rounding third and scoring. Scott DeBrule and Chris Gal, known more for what he can do on the mound, comes to the plate and delivers a bloop single. Wow. Just stuck the bat out and it went over the head of Barry. It was a kind of a half-hearted swing at a pitch over the outer half. If you just take a look, he just flipped the bat at it. And Barry just had no shot. 
De Bruyne and De Bruyne crossing scored home. easily. Yeah, I mean it was it just just a flip of the bat, and Jacksonville's in front. That run will be charged to the starter Austin Drury. Man at second still belongs to him. And Franco Guardicioni comes in. So the cat and mouse game for the time being. The advantage goes to Chris Hayes. He burns Evan Fernandez in the process. Well, it paid off. Used two guys to get one run. That's not a problem. He's not going to use Gal out of the bullpen. So might as well go right ahead. You do lose a bat for later in the game in Fernandez, but when you think the way that things are going, as longer you get into this ball game, the better your bullpen gets. You know, you get stocked at a one-run lead for now. You shorten the game, you get a lead. You know the ninth is on lockdown. 2-0 is low and outside. 3-0, you know, you're referring to Chris Maloney, who now trails. Brooks Wilson for the save lead in the NCAA. Not just the A-Sun, the NCAA. Maloney got one last night. And Brooks Wilson countered today for Stetson, closing down a 2-1 win. Fastball, belt high strike. You know, and we were past a note earlier from the A-Sun, and that is Brooks Wilson is the 25th player all time, all time in college baseball to have 20 saves or more in a season. Maloney's going to more than likely have a chance tonight to get to 20. My question is how many times has it happened twice in one season? And has it ever happened in the same conference in the same season? I'm going to go with no. Remember the ASUN staff is shaking his head no. There's no way he's even looking that up. He will try. <laughs> it's a challenge. You don't know Johannes as well as I do. He's going after it. He's on a stat hunt. 3-1 is outside, ball four. They're loaded up. May not get a save opportunity if Gareth Stazu can come through. Strike out and a line into a double play. There's a look at Sam Armstrong. He's 90 feet from home, representing an extra run. JU has pushed back in front. They've done so with two hits and two walks. Marchese delivers straight up the shoot. Left side of the infield. It's Barry in fair territory. He's got it. But the lead returns to JU on an RBI hit from normally starting pitcher, turned into DH and pinch hitter, Chris Gow. Jacksonville three, North Florida two, after five in Jacksonville, Florida. The nationally ranked University of North Florida in Jacksonville is situated in a nature preserve near the Atlantic Ocean. UNF is known for small class sizes and individualized attention from faculty. Our 16,000 students enjoy Division I athletics, state-of-the-art recreational facilities, and residence halls with the best amenities. The University of North Florida. No one like you, no place like this. And Osprey looking over the campus of the University of North Florida, the site. 2018 A-Sun Championship is game number six of the tournament, game number three of day two. And it's pitting two crosstown rivals, a 3-2 lead for the JU Dolphins. And before we went to break, Robert Harper <laughs> laid out a challenge. And he went after. The A Suns stat man, Johannes, and that was a bad move. Not only did you doubt, not only did you doubt Johannes, Robert, but you also doubted what might be for a couple of closers in the A Sun. Yeah, we were talking about Maloney, and if he gets a chance to save tonight, he would be 20. Tying Brooks Wilson for the NCAA lead. There's only been 25 men, including Wilson, that have ever had 20 
saves in the history of the NCAA in terms of collegiate baseball. I thought, man, you know, there's no way 25 guys all time there's ever been two in the same season, let alone two in the same conference. Well, I was wrong. The only time it's ever happened in NCAA history where there were 20 saves in a season by two individuals, they happen to be in the same conference. UCLA's David Berg had 24 in 2013. That's the NCAA mark that everybody's chasing. And then Jeremy Scherfe of Oregon had 21 the same year. And UCLA, Oregon, obviously in the same league out there in the Pacific. Is it the Pac-10, Pac-12, Pac-47? What is it? It's Pac-12, right? Pac-12. There you go. Can't remember. I think if we do enough diligent searching, we should be able to find some crow around here for you to eat. Oh, I'll eat it. I'm hungry, so we're good. <laughs> Blake Voyles at the plate. Stroke to the right side. A one hopper handled by Lahane has plenty of time to throw out the first baseman of the UNF Ospreys. One gone. Stockton has really settled into this game. He has now retired the last seven in a row after a leadoff single from Prather in the fourth inning. Gave up a couple of runs in the third, but that's really been the only blemish. And North Florida got going in the third inning. A couple hits on four, or a couple of runs on four hits. They've only had the one hit outside of that frame. That was in the fourth, the leadoff for Prather. And we'll see if uh, Stockton continues to cruise right along. Pitch count's in a good spot. Scores in a good spot if you're a JU fan. North Florida needs to buckle down. Another lefty at the plate. Mac Wilson swings and misses at a change of pace. Stockton's pitch count in an excellent spot. That was pitch number 70. Wilson is 0 for 2 on the day. Both outs in the air. Stockton not necessarily a ground ball pitcher. The fastball changeup combo. He gets the change over for a strike. 0 and 2. Recorded only three outs on the ground. At least by the traditional ground ball means he's also had someone hit into a fielder's choice and a sacrifice bun was laid down. The 0-2 to Wilson above the letters. One ball and two strikes. It's a tight one here in the River City. Jacksonville three and North Florida two. Base runners have been on, but big time hits, clutch hits have been hard to come by, especially after the first game we saw today, which was NJIT and Lipscomb. Bison's knocked off NJIT. The last two games have been for the pitchers. And they certainly have. We had a 2-1 game earlier, Stetson and Kennesaw State. 2-2, smacked into right field, dropping down in front of Duncan Hunter for a single. Mac Wilson's first hit of the evening. This ball game, even though it's a 3-2 game, we've seen plenty of base runners, just not a lot of hitting. Stetson's had, excuse me, Jacksonville's had some timely hitting, for Scal namely, but just not a lot of thump in the order like we saw out of Lipscomb in the first game. Lipscomb was hitting the ball out of the ballpark left and right in the first couple of innings. Talking about the home runs that we've seen, and eight of them so far total in the tournament. Five off the bat of Lipscomb Bisons. They were no doubt shots. There wasn't a cheap one among them. Ground ball snare. What a grab by Stockton. He thought about going to second for a moment. Initially popped up, thought first, then was like, oh, yeah, I might be able to get a double play, but instead he just gets the sure out at first base. Yeah, Sam Armstrong is going to come over and check on him. I think his spike got stuck as he tried to turn. I don't know if we can get another look at it, but he he gloved it, which is amazing in and of itself. Had he not gloved it, it would have been a for sure double play. But then as he tried to turn towards second, I think his front spike got caught and almost tripped him up, and that's why he decided to go to first. He got down to that ball very quick for a guy who's six foot three, six foot four. Good athlete. Good pedigree, at least, to be a good athlete. If you missed it in the open, you're not familiar with Spencer's father. It's Dick Stockton. Name may sound familiar. At one point was a top 10 tennis player in the world back in the 70s. Fastball upstairs to Gonzalez. He's 0 for 2. Wilson is now at 
second base. There's a look at Mack. Gonzalez in the box. And there's the change of pace again. It's really been fastball change-ups. Spencer's thrown a few breaking balls, but not a ton of sliders, not a big curve. There you see the relief pitcher in him. You can get by as a closer, which he was a year ago, fastball change. A lot of guys who did it, Trevor Hoffman, namely in the major leagues, was a fastball change guy. 1-1. One, one. There's a hook that falls in, so... But if you have two good pitches at the collegiate level, you can get by with it a long, long time. A ball and two strikes to the catcher, Gonzalez. J.U. taking the lead just moments ago in the bottom of the fifth. Stockton deals. Edge of the bat and out of play. Base hit means a tie ball game. We saw Gal come through with like a punch pop-up that fell in over the third base bag. Gonzalez doesn't have to hit it hard. He just has to get it to the outfield somehow safely. Mac Wilson will take care of the rest. He'll be on the move on contact. Stockton takes a while to get his sign from Guardicione. Here's the pitch. He got him, swing and a miss. Puts down Ray Gonzalez. Hasn't struck out many. That's a big time for his second of the evening. Stockton is through six. Jacksonville with a one run edge. The final game of the second day of the A-Sun Championships. Into the bottom half of the sixth inning, Abraham Sequeira. Shortstop for UNF has been quite busy here this evening. A lot of balls hit in play. A lot of outs made and only five runs total up on the board. Nine, one, and two due up for the JU Dolphins against that man. In relief, Nick Marchese came on and got the final out after surrendering an inherited runner in a base hit RBI from Chris Gal that is so far the difference in the ball game. Looks to go into his first full inning of work. Duncan Hunter will greet him, a strikeout, a walk, and a run scored on his resume tonight. 88 mile per hour fastball downstairs. Bryce Zimmerman alongside Robert Harper. We've been with you all day, all tournament, and it's going to continue on three more games tomorrow. And then championship Saturday. We know Stetson will be playing tomorrow. The number one seed. They'll face one of these two teams. Wine kicking fire. Peened him square in the back. After two pitches, very close to the strike zone, that one got away from Marchese. Just up and in. He was trying to get the ball actually out of the over half, and it just slipped out of his hand. And just as you mentioned, hit him square. It looked like he got him on the left cheek. But if you're going to get hit by a 90 mile an hour fastball, that's a good spot. For some people, there's more padding there than others. True that. But if you're going to pick a spot, I, tr I guess the jersey is about the only other place. 
Samayan stands in, shows Bud pulls back, takes a strike. I don't consider that getting hit. That's nicked. When I'm talking about getting hit, I mean the ball hits you and drops or ricochets somewhere else. Not one that catches some cloth on its way by. That's nicked by a pitch. Shouldn't even count. Bun laid down right back to the pitcher Marchese. He only plays to first, and Samayan does his job yet again. He's 0 for 1. He's been to the plate four times. He's only officially registered one at-bat with a sack fly and a walk, and now a sacrifice bunt. It carried off by his teammates. He's doing his job at the top of the order, as he has done over his first two years with Jay Utz. Kind of crazy to think that Ruben Samayan, the year that he's had above 300 average, scoring 51 runs this season. He's only a sophomore. Weak tapper off the bat of Lahane. Throw over to first base. Tag applied as it pulled Voiles off the bag. Sakara's throw was off the mark, but Lahane retired. Second time he's been tagged on the cap bill in this tournament. Two down, and now Duncan Hunter moving over to third base for Scott DeBruel. That's a good play by Sakara to get to because he knew he had to hurry. Lahane runs pretty well. Good job by Voiles to glove tag on one motion. Only chance to get the out. Tough spot here for Marchese for a couple of reasons. DeBruel, one of the hottest hitters in the league. Two more hits today. His average scorching 359 now. Breaking ball is downstairs. Yeah, by far and away the league leader now. Just look at what he's done situationally. DeBruel, 359 when runners have been on base, equaling his current average. 368 with runners in scoring position, which he has now. And 388 with runners on base and two outs. But this time it's not to be on the button and right to Marchese. Jacksonville threatens but does not score. No hits, runs, or errors, and one man left on base. We have played six. JU with a one-run advantage. That is Ozzy the Osprey, the mascot of the North Florida Ospreys. I think we're that's in, his agent. We're in double zero, and yeah, he's somebody on the phone on his behalf. <laughs> Ozzy has been moving around Harmon Stadium, dancing and entertaining the fans. You know, you can go into a mascot costume, Robert, and you can do just about anything. Get away with all sorts of things that you could not get away with like those types of gyrations. I mean, if I, if if I walked around shaking my <laughs> belly like that, I mean, how, how well would that go over? Nothing like if you were in a giant bird suit. Stockton back out for the seventh inning, facing eight, nine, and one. I guarantee you this, if I went walking around shaking my belly like that, no one would run up and hug me like they do a mascot like Ozzy. They'd be all running away, not running up to me. Cut and a miss by Matthias makes it one and one. Who's better at shaking their belly, Ozzy or Jeffrey Chrisan of the Lipscomb Bisons? Who? That's a tough one. That's a battle for mascot of the 2018 ASUN Championships. Routine grounders got to Brules. Hop, step, and a throw. Stretch by Camacho. One down. I'll give the edge to Chrisan. 
for now. The reason I say that is usually when he shakes his belly, he hits a home run. Now, if I was going to go out there and hit a couple bombs, I would give that to him. Abraham Sakara coming to the plate. Ozzy knows how to dance to reggaeton as well. Multifaceted bird as far as his hip gyrations. Just can't fly. Stockton fastball for a strikes. Boy, Spencer Stockton has settled into the game. He's gotten better as we've moved along. He has that because he struggled in the second, third, and fourth. He has not struggled in the fifth, sixth, and now here into the seventh. Hits the mid, but it was outside. Ball and a strike on Sakara. His batting average paltry, 130. He's driven in five runs, has laid down a sacrifice bunt today. 1-1 one, one deal, it's downstairs. Flags lie limp in left center field. The wind has died down. Lights on at Harmon Stadium. We're a little over the nine hours and 30 minutes mark of the day. It's 9.30. Three balls and one strike. Now you see just a light ripple. The beautiful stars and stripes. Swing and a miss. Threw him a 3-1 change. We like to get Sakara aboard, get a runner on about it in front of the uh, top of the order. It'd be a bonus for the Ospreys to have somebody aboard in front of Barry. It's not meant to be. 3-2 delivery after being down in the count 3-1. Stockton fans Sakara. Yeah, just a tailing fastball away. Sakara lays off. It's probably ball four, but he couldn't keep from pulling the trigger. Bags clean for Chris Berry. One for three is single back in the third. You don't want to be too far down the road here, but North Florida in all reality has about four outs to work with. And you say, what do you mean? There's the ninth, and I guess there's always a chance, but Maloney is virtually untouchable and has been most of the year. He was pumping 94-95 in his save yesterday, Chris Maloney. He reminds me of a former reliever in the Atlantic Sun, at least during their time in the Atlantic Sun, Corey Garrett from Mercer. Very similar motion, very similar build. Garrett had a little bit more life, but then you also have to remember that Maloney is only a freshman. Garrett was a junior college product to make in Georgia. 1-1 one, one skied into the Jacksonville night. And Lahane's underneath it. For round number three, an easy frame for Spencer Stockton. He has retired eight of the last nine that he has faced. We're at the stretch. JU up by a run. There you see the line score after we're all stretched out here. Folks have had their Cracker Jacks. We don't ever want to go home. 3-2 lead for Jacksonville. The go-ahead run scored by the JU Dolphins in the fifth inning on an RBI single after a cat and mouse game between the two head coaches. Chris Gow, the pitcher, came on as a pinch hitter and was able to deliver an RBI single against that man, Nick Marchese. Gal is scheduled to hit third in this inning. Camacho, Armstrong, and then 
the DH. Here's a look at the fans in attendance, many of them wearing Jacksonville green, intermingling between many of the fans because just as the players might know each other, their moms, dads, brothers, sisters, it's really a family affair here at Harmon Stadium. Camacho's had a very good first couple days of the ASUN championships. And he's gotten better each year, too. I've seen him now for three years. I just think that he's gone from a free swinger to just very controlled and a very good approach. And he seems to be thinking opposite field more often than not, and that's always a good approach. See the ball a little bit longer. He's driven in a ton of runs because of it. I honestly think he could hit for more power if he chose to. But gap to gap guy in the big ballpark across town because Jacksonville's Park plays a much bigger than this one. So probably his approach is best suited for the ballpark in which he plays in. He had a frozen rope out to center field his last time up. I think a lot of guys in this ballpark we hit a lot more home runs. Camacho being one. I think you see guys like Lee Solomon and Krizan hit more. Just because the ball carries so well. And they make such good contact, all of them. Two balls and two strikes. It remains on Camacho. His RBI back in the first is 55th of the year. That is tops in the A Sun and Really, the only one that's close to him is his teammate. Reaches out, makes contact on a ball that deflects off Marchese's glove, and an infield hit for Camacho. And that is a that is an example of how much better a hitter Camacho is. He stayed on the breaking ball long enough and made enough contact to put it in a precarious spot for the UNF defense. Yeah, there's a situation. We talked about the play that Stockton made a couple of innings ago where he snagged a hot shot right back to him and try to turn two, but instead went to first base. We thought that it would have been an easy double play had the ball gotten by him. Same situation there. It's an easy out if the ball gets by Marchese, but it's hard to tell a guy not to try to make a play. And so the beneficiary is Camacho. He's got a single. Another multi-hit day for Angel Camacho. He occupies first. Sam Armstrong in the box. Two walks and a fly out to left. And that was against starter Austin Drury. Fastball downstairs to start off Armstrong. The issue now is Gal's on deck. I know he has a base hit and an RBI. But I don't think you can bunt Armstrong in this situation, even though it's just a one-run ball game. Maybe I'm wrong, but can you expect Gal to get you two hits? to drive in two runs. In fact, might be two outs. A hot shot to the second baseman and a nice turn. Prather to Sakara, who was nifty over the bag and the throw to first. And the leadoff infield hit is erased. Mark it down 4-6-3 in your scorebooks at home. Prather did a good job to glove that because that thing was smoked. Armstrong got a lot of it. Prather stayed down on it. Take another look. If we can get a look at Prather staying down on the baseball. I mean, it ate him up, but it was Something he was able to glove and bobble around for just a moment, but stayed under control, and they were able to turn two. They knew Armstrong was running. While he's a decent athlete, he's not a speedy athlete. And able to turn two. Gal swinging at the first pitch. Another chance for Sequeira. Smooth and fire. Over to first base, and that'll be out number three. Marchese faces the minimum despite giving up a hit. Seven have been played. And it's still just a one-run deficit for North Florida, the number four seed. Final game of day number two of the ASUN Championships.
The A-Sun Championships continuing on day number two at Jacksonville. Holding on to the slimmest of margins so far with seven in the books. Only six outs left for North Florida to do some damage. Here's a look at many of the Osprey faithful who are rooting for a comeback against their crosstown rival. For UNF, it's Board, Murphy, and Voiles due up. It's been a beautiful night here at Jacksonville. Had a rain delay in the first game of this triple header. Lasted two hours, but since then, nary a drop has fallen. Well, this is the group that has to get it done, not only because Maloney's going to be in in the ninth, but because it's the heart of your order, 2-3-4. You need someone to get aboard. You need to find a way to move him along or drive him in. And Dalton Board has speed. That helps if he can find a way to reach. The wheel and deal from Stockton. Rips the mid. Outside corner 0-2. He has really settled into a groove. I didn't think Stockton had much through the first three or four innings, but the fifth, sixth, seventh, and the start of the eighth, he's been spot on. The last 13 hitters, only one has reached. That was Mac Wilson with a single in the sixth. North Florida needs a base hit now. The board's got to protect. The 0-2 set up off the plate, hit the target, and Board did not chase. Gardasioni kind of moved that mitt back towards the plate. That's almost a for certain sign that it was outside. He almost shoved it back, if you noticed in the live action. Off speed and away. Stockton's upset with himself. Walks out behind the mound, turns his back to the catcher. I think he's more upset with the way that he threw that pitch than what the call was, because it wasn't anywhere near. Even count for Stockton and Board. Tried the backdoor breaking ball, doesn't get it. Three balls, two strikes on board. He's trying to get a on base any way that he can. Yeah, you just need to find a way aboard. Base hit, walk, error, whatever you can get. Peering over the mid, here's the pitch on the payoff. Got him to pop it up. It'll stay on the infield dirt. Lahane above the cap bill to bring it in. So that's an easy out after some work by Stockton. He's getting close to 100 pitches. Not that that will prevent him from getting more outs. You see what he's done on the day, seven and a third. Just the two earned runs allowed. They came in the same frame back in the third. Back-to-back -back RBI hits from Voiles and Murphy. Here's the wine kicking fire to start off Tanner Murphy and a strike dealt in. Well, if there's one guy that can tie the game with one swing, this is him. Only one hit so far in the ASUN championships. Ten home runs, however, tops in the ASUN. Another fast strike, at least of those remaining in the championship. Stockton ahead in the count. Whirl, twirl, and hurl. Fought off out of play. My apologies. Those 10 home runs. Second in the A-Sun, Cole Gilmore. During the regular season, had more home runs for Florida Gulf Coast University, who did not make the A-Sun Championship Tournament this year. That still astonishes me. 24 and 8 in the non-conference. Ranked in the top 25, and they're not here. Or at least they were at one point ranked in the top 25. Top 100 RPI, you have to wonder what it might have been. They picked up more wins in conference play. Breaking ball just a bit outside. For Stockton Sharp, he is really sharp right now. I mean, he was not sharp early. That was a heck of a pitch. Even if it was off the plate, it was exactly where he wanted to throw it. Burley right-handers, 1-2. In the air again, another fly ball on the infield. How many of those have we had in the last two innings? Lahane's got the grab. In fact, Lahane has retired the last three men on pop-outs to second base. And he's recorded 
four of those very similarly in this ball game, and four of them over the last three and two thirds defensively. And I don't think they're going to wait to get to Maloney. Stockton is out in the middle of that diamond. Well, I saw the coach step out onto the dugout, front steps, but decided that maybe he's going back in. Maloney's ready to go down there. Well, seven in a row retired by Stockton. Blake Voyles coming to the plate. He's not a huge power threat, does have three home runs, and we know how this ballpark can play. Stockton's been getting outs in the air, but nothing really struck well. Fastball high and outside, ball one. And nothing with a lot of carry. We haven't seen a lot of that out of North Florida in the two games. Even from the guys who do have a little thump like Tanner Murphy. Change up, had a weekly wave at it. One ball and one strike on Voiles. This has really been a veteran showing by Spencer Stockton. We've seen some great pitching here today. It's a very different feel in the first game of the afternoon. 1-1, one, one, didn't go. Threw him back-to-back change-ups. We knew it was going to be different because both NJIT and Lipscomb were facing elimination. So it's just a different mentality. But even Kennesaw State, who was facing elimination against Stetson, received a stellar performance from Brooks Buckler. And now Spencer Stockton trying to follow suit with a gem of his own. Now he has been as sharp as they come over the last three, four innings. He's down to the count here. 3-1 to Voiles. Dropped it in for a strike. And an obvious fastball count. He still had confidence in the changeup. That's why Voiles didn't pull the trigger. He threw it 3-1. Will he do it again 3-2? Payoff delivery. It was a changeup, and it's a two-bouncer. Camacho's got it. The underhand flip is there. And a 1-2-3-8 inning. What a night for Spencer Stockton. He's allowed just two runs through eight. And his JU Dolphins have the lead midway through this eighth inning. So, I saw the Wacoffs guy leaving your house the other day. I thought they fixed everything. Yeah, everything's great. They just came out to do their yearly maintenance. We should probably do that too. You really should. They check everything, inside and out. And it beats having a massive repair down the road. Yeah, but it's expensive, right? Nope, one year is less than my monthly cable bill. Sounds like Wacoffs is way smart. Smart, clean, professional. Wacoffs Air Conditioning, leading the way in home comfort. We, we can. can. Look forward. Commit to progress and a bright future. Blaze the path. Challenge norms. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Enlighten and innovate. Shine together. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they, they will, will never, never block, block the sun. We can! Connect. Put student athletes first. Impact. Rise. Every day. In the sun. The JU fans on their feet going to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The number two seed holding a one-run advantage over Crosstown rival North Florida. Glad to have you with us on ESPN+. Plus. Spencer Stockton looking very good for the JU Dolphins, and his offense will try to give him some breathing room with the bottom three due up. Cordesione, Garistazu, and Duncan Hunter, and there's... A large group of the North Florida faithful. The good news is that no matter what happens today for both these two teams, they will play baseball tomorrow. Bad news is, is one will be playing an elimination game within the first two games. Here's Franco Guardicione. Fastball behind him. Guardicione has already been plunked today. He's walked twice. Been aboard three times, and he's zero for zero. I think the tough part for J.U., or the winner of this ball game regardless. High fly ball off the bat of Guardicione. Track, wall, 
gone. I hope you said goodbye to that baseball because it ain't coming back. The home run for Guardiazioni, his third of the year, RBI number 24. And that is an insurance run that JU can desperately use. We've had some that have scraped the wall. That one was well out of the ballpark. Probably the longest one we've seen in the two days so far. A majestic drive, the celebration for the JU Dolphins. Here's another look. There's a no doubter. Yeah, Let, Wilson, Wilson gave, gave up, up his <laughs> he gave up his run and admired that one over the last hundred or so feet. Well, there's an insurance run for you. As if Maloney even needed it. Garistazu now stands in and has an even count one and one. Left fielder for JU is 0 for 3. Fouled up and out of play. One ball and two strikes. Each team now with six hits, but JU has put four runs on the board. Off speed is outside. Two balls and two strikes on Garistazu. Yeah, that ball was crushed. It had a certain sound to it, didn't it? Yeah, it was screaming as it left. Fly ball into center field shallow. Murphy breaks in, settles underneath. So that's home run number nine hit including all games so far, the A-Sun Championships. And we had 11 last year in DeLand. In a much more offensive league, think about that too. He had one of the most potent home run hitters of all time in the A-Sun, Nick Rivera for FGCU and had one home run in that series. The 1-0. That ball struck well out to left field. Wilson going back to the track of the wall. He's got it. Two steps shy of the wall. Wilson able to track it down, but J.U. not fooled against Marchese. That ball was tattooed, too. He just didn't have enough lift to get it out. And Wilson taking away extra bases. That was a for certain double. Just allowed out. Ruben Samayan coming to the plate. He's 0 for 1, but a sack fly, a sack bunt, a walk, and a run scored. Marchese misses downstairs. Bounced in the dirt and then struck Ruben Samayan. And he'll head down to first base. He is filling up a box score without a hit. <laughs> <laughs> you look in the first, a walk and a run scored, a sack fly in the third. He's grounded out, a sack bunt in the sixth, and now he's been struck by a pitch. Gives an opportunity for Chris Lahane to try and do something at the plate. Lahane, an uncharacteristic 0 for 3, did lay down a sacrifice bunt in the first. Look at the pitching lines today for UNF. Drury started with four and two thirds, allowed three earned runs, three hits, walked five, struck out five. Through 107 pitches, only 54 were strikes. For Marchese, he's now at three total innings pitched. One earned run surrendered, and it was just moments ago on the Guardicione bomb. Three hits, he's hit two batters. Starts him with a slurvy breaking ball that falls in for a strike on Lahane. Maloney all done warming up. He'll be ready to run into the game when this one moves to the ninth. Checking throw over is the million. Is definitely a man that will get on the move. Eight stolen bases and 11 attempts. 
And try to get this thing to three. Keeps it in a safe situation for Maloney. Leaning. Doesn't go and would have been a good pitch low and outside with a breaking ball. One and one on Lahane. Dolphins second baseman has one home run this year and the top of the order doesn't provide a lot of power. Boy, do they get on base. False start from Samayan. Fly ball off to the right side and foul ground. A long running look for Borden. It was way too far for him to go get. The on-base percentage a big measurable, or at least has been in past years. And the more base runners you have, the more runs you score, right? Isn't that the way it usually works? That's the way it usually works. And that has been a big part of JU's success. You look at the top five hitters in the order, four of them have on base percentages over 400. Coming into today, Samayan, Lahane, De Bruyne, and Armstrong. And Most of those guys are going to add to that percentage. And Camacho, who you didn't mention, is the one that drives them all in anyway. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. In the air to right field, Board draws a beat on it. And he squeezes for out number three, but an important insurance run added on a big swing from Franco Guardacione. It's 4-2 Jacksonville, and it's Maloney time. For J.U., Spencer Stockton has been phenomenal. He has gone eight innings in this ball game, getting the start. Didn't have his best stuff early, but he certainly found it. Yeah, he did. He struggled there in the third, but after that inning, he's only allowed two base hits, and he has been spot on around the edges of the plate. And even when he's missed and not gotten that strike call, he has been right on the spot of his catcher, Gardasione. When we jumped the gun, we thought, it would be Chris Maloney to start off this ninth inning, but Stockton, the way he's pitching, retiring the last eight in a row. He'll face Mac Wilson. And that change up against the left-hander and see if J.U. can get him to go the distance and save the bullpen for another day. Wilson does have a single against Stockton. He was the last man to reach in the sixth inning. And a strike delivered on the outside corner at 87. I don't mind this move. I mean, other than just it adds a save to a guy and gives us a great storyline. Stockton's been dominant since that third inning. And you've oh. got, a, got a portion of the order that he can handle. I mean, there's not a lot of pop with Wilson, Prather, and Gonzalez. I think it certainly helps the home run by Guardicione. 1-1 one, one change of pace. Had him out in front on the front foot. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, in a one-run game, you maybe you make the change, right? Two-run game, you give him a base runner. If you get a base runner board, you're coming out. If not, you stay in. Just missing the outside corner with a change. And that's a perfect example of what we talked about with Stockton since the third. That is a great pitch. It's one that hits the mid of his catcher without much movement from Gardasione behind the plate. It's a pitcher's pitch. 
Threw him another changeup. Weak contact. Right side, Lahane's got it. Has to hurry. And retires Wilson from the left-handed batter's box. Nine in a row set down by Stockton. Now Jay Prather will grab his war club and head to the plate. Single back in the fourth inning, Stockton. An attempt to go the distance, 114 pitches now his total. He throws so many change-ups, though. And I feel like his 114 is different than a Logan Gilbert or a Frank German. Change-up strike on the outside corner. Looking at the lineup, recognizing how well that change-up has done. A hopper back over the mound, charging at short to Brule. Double clutched and safe. And now the tying run will come to the plate. So Prather will reach on an infield single. And now let's see what Chris Hayes does. And a right-hander coming to the plate. Ray Gonzalez, Maloney is ready down in the bullpen. And it's the right call. Safe all the way. And the double clutch cost to Brule in the Dolphins. Gonzalez of the group at the bottom probably has the most pop. Doesn't carry a great average, but has three home runs. And Hayes is on the doorstep of the dugout, and that means Maloney's in the ball game as he makes his way to the mound. That's Just as we thought. I mean, base runner, change. It's a tough break for Stockton because he got the weak contact induced on Jay Prather, but... What a fantastic appearance from Stockton. Started off a little rocky, but he exits the game with a chance to win it and send JU into Friday with two wins in the A's Sun Championships. It'll be up to Maloney, bidding for his 20th save of the season. The JU Dolphins, two outs away from their second game victory in the A-Sun Championships, and they will go to a familiar face on the mound. The man who has been closing down games for the Dolphins all year long. It's freshman Chris Maloney. He's a big kid, 6'2", 205, and he can bring it. Yep, he can. He's going to be around 94, 95 with the fastball. You're not going to see much else other than that, maybe a little breaker every now and again, but he's going to live off the heat. And you saw the numbers. He's only pitched 30 innings all year long, but that's because he's a one-inning guy. And now he only has to get two outs in order to get his 20th save. Playing in his hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. Went to Oak Leaf High School, and he's got to face Gonzalez and Matthias do up. The inning continues after that. Abraham Sequeira is the scheduled third hitter left in the inning. Let me play devil's advocate just a bit here because if Gonzalez runs into one, on a 94, 95 mile an hour fastball, it's more likely to get out of the ballpark. Stockton at 88, 89, doesn't have as much carry. Now you still have to hit the ball well, but the speed that the ball is coming in is coming in at helps with the exit velocity as well. Maloney still has a few more warm up tosses. It's a good time to take a look at the ballpark. You see there, beautiful night. Temperature really came down after the rain moved through and. We're around 80 degrees at game time. Lights on, a well-lit field. 
talking to athletic director for UNF, Lee Moon, and he was very proud of this playing surface, and it has played true so far in the championships. Yeah, and you would ask, is there anybody else that you could go to? And it really isn't. I mean, North Florida just does not have the depth. They don't have an Evan Fernandez sitting on the bench, a guy with five home runs and some pop. Now, they have a few guys scattered throughout, but this is the best option they have in Gonzalez, an everyday guy that has started the majority of the year. But again, he does have a little pop, and it just takes one. you got to find the middle of that barrel and see if you can drive one out of the ballpark. Gonzalez in the box. Here's the pitch. He was swinging, looking fastball at 91 and found it out of play. It's one thing about Maloney. Yesterday he did pitch. Don't throw a lot of back-to-back -back games without a lot of days of rest in between for closers the NCAA level, except for guys like Brooks Wilson and Chris Maloney. They're used to it. The 0-1 slider. They went 91 with the fastball, fouled it back. He decided to come back with something with a little movement. The slider, 79. I mean, that's a big gap. And it looks very similar out of the hand. Freshman extremely accomplished already in his career. We already know the numbers. Takes a peek over to first base. Prather with average speed. The 0-2. Fly ball, shallow right field. This is going to bounce down for a single. Prather had the play ahead of him and stops at second base. Gonzalez didn't run. I don't know why. He literally stood at home plate and had turned around as if he had fouled the ball off. There's going to be a pinch runner coming into the ball game for him now, but that might be the oddest thing I've ever seen. He hit the ball on the button to right field. Alex Hendricks will take over for Gonzalez, representing the tying run. Runners at first and second. And UNF threatening. Up steps Chris Mathias. He will actually be pinch hit for. So it won't be <laughs> Mathias. Look at Here's this. Look. Gonzalez just turns around. He thought he had fouled the ball off or popped it up, one or the other. I have to wonder if Hunter had realized that, they could have thrown him out at first. He would have thrown him out at first. Hunter went to second, which is the play. You always go to the lead runner, but Hunter wasn't paying attention to where Gonzalez was in that situation. We have Raf the Buono standing in. His 34th game of the year. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. 237 average. He's got one home run this year. Also four doubles and two triples. With his 27 hits. I would be surprised if he's in there to try to find a gap. The outfield though is playing extremely deep. Fastball low from Maloney. This game has taken a sudden turn. As Stockton was rolling merrily along, a single on the infield by Jay Prather. Moved to the bullpen by Hayes. Gonzalez with a single. He's been replaced by Hendricks at first. Two on with one down. Here's the pitch. It is outside. The hitter's count developing for Libuano. Well, this is your guy if you're Hayes. He's out there for the duration. Win, lose, or in this case, draw. You do have a two-run lead. That's the good thing. The problem is the go-ahead runs at the plate. Libanow takes low. Three balls and one strike. And a hitter's count. He can pick a spot. If it's not there, wait for a 3-2 pitch. And the 3-1, off the fist, shallow left field, long run for everybody. It will bounce down in fair territory. Prather rounding third base, he's gonna score. The ball was bobbled and then overthrown, taking a shot home, the throw, it's an early dive and a tag out. What in the world was that? It is a 4-3 ball game. 
but out at home, Alex Hendricks, who got ready to dive, stumbled and landed six feet in front of home plate. I don't even know what I just saw. I mean, let's, this is a perfect let's start scenario. start from the beginning. Yeah, it's a perfect scenario for North Florida. This is like the gal single. The difference is no one was shaded that direction. The run scores easily, and a great read off of the bat by the pinch runner to get all the way to third, but then just stumbled. And had he not stumbled, I think he would have scored because the catcher, Gardasioni, bobbled the baseball. <laughs> Trying to be aggressive with one out. Now for North Florida, they need a two-out hit. So it's a single and an RBI for Libanal into left field. Garistazu overran the baseball and then overthrew the baseball. But it ended up working out in their favor rather than second and third. And only one out. It's now a runner at second base and two gone. And Sakara is the hitter. You show up at a baseball game, you never know what you're going to see. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Sakara remaining in the game to hit. They've used a couple of pinch hitters already. Libanel, that's him representing the tying run at second base. Maloney bidding for his 20th save of the year, and it's not going to come easy. But well, pretty. But the man at the plate has really struggled at the dish. His average at 128, hitting 192, however, with runners in scoring position. Fastball upstairs. Maloney has not had his normal location. Not in this sequence, that's for certain. I'm still amazed at what we just saw. What could have been a tie game if not for some loose footing. 91 mile per hour bullet on the outside corner. When North Florida had their chance, still has their chance. Maloney sets high at the letters. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Cut and a miss. Down to a final strike, UNF is the four seed against the number two seed, Jacksonville Dolphins. It's a rivalry game and it has been as tight as you might imagine. It's been fun, that's for certain. It's been eventful, especially here in the top half of the ninth inning. <laughs> this entire ninth inning, the home run, this, and what we've seen. Maloney ready. Leg whip and fire. Swing and a miss. It's over. The number two seed, Jacksonville Dolphins, hold on. The one run win, 4 3, the final, and Maloney, the hug on his 20th save, tying him with Brooks Wilson for the NCAA lead. Becomes just the 26th man in NCAA history to record 20 saves in a season. This one had a little bit of everything, Robert. It did. It had uh, good pitching from Spencer Stockton. It had good defense, had some good base running and some bad base running. He saw a little bit of everything in this one, and it had a lot of emotion as the two River City clubs matched up. Three more games tomorrow. The number one seed, Stetson. The number two seed, Jacksonville. That gets underway at 11 a.m., and North Florida and Lipscomb will battle for their ASUN Championship Lives tomorrow at 3 p.m., and another game to follow depending on